Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Well guys, we have President Trump warning Americans not to travel to Venezuela. Um, I think that's kind of obvious with everything that's going on right now. It's uh, ramping up as we can see and as we expected and there's a lot of little more details coming out really getting us a, a, a good picture of the big picture. And you know, they can't hide it this time. It's just too damn obvious what's going on. And so obviously preface this by saying that, you know, obviously Maduro is, is not the greatest president, you know, the world has ever seen. And uh, obviously the Venezuelan people have gone through so much suffering. And, you know, some of it is the fault of Maduro and some of it is the fault of um, basically the sanctions that have been imposed as well. So when we look at it, you know, the people that need to have, we need to have sympathy for are the actual Venezuelan people themselves. And really people should be looking at how do we, how do we help the Venezuelan people? <laughs> you know, how do the Venezuelan people get out of this situation? so that their country is not turned into a uh, just a, another another country that's full of depleted uranium and irradiated and devastated you know just destroyed by bombs and artillery and munitions and who knows what else because I'll tell you what this is not going to if you know this has the potential to not end in a pretty way <laughs> to put it you know bluntly uh this has a lot of potential to be a, another horrible atrocity against humanity against humanity itself there's a lot of a lot of things going on right here and so this was out of the guardian um and let's scoot over here so this is really important. What Russia stands to lose in Venezuela. So while the U.S. pushes to drive Venezuela's Maduro from power, Russia vows to continue supporting its strategic partner. And again, we realize that there was agreements put in place between Russia and Venezuela. They, they saw this coming. This is this is not, you know, something that is just out of nowhere this this has been telegraphed we we've seen the signs for a while people like uh florida marquis has been on this for months and so as we've gotten closer and seen some of the things he was talking about start to actually manifest more and more of us have started to look deeper and deeper into it ourselves and uh yeah it's so obvious what this is really all about and again this is resource hoarding we have two main power blocks developing in the world you know what was uh you know known as the BRICS nations and then of course we have you know NATO and in some cases the lines are being blurred a little like Turkey is technically NATO but they're going to be on the Russian and Chinese and Iranian side and then in this case you have Brazil with now with Bolsonaro there uh they're part of the BRICS they're the B in BRICS and so, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, uh, they're technically probably going to help in the invasion of Venezuela, along with Colombia and others, and with Bolton's, you know, little 5,000 troops, it, it, it'll escalate into much, much more than that. Um, so they might be on the U.S. side in this venture. So, you know, this type of thing does happen when you look at things. There's there's a lot of times alliances and alliances were double crossing. You know, we we've seen that. You know, you know, Hitler himself had an agreement with the Russians that he they wouldn't attack each other. But then, you know, for whatever reason, he decided to go and do it. And you know, it was part of his bigger plans. Although, if he had not attacked the Russians, you know, the war might have not ended as it did. But of course, again, it's so easy to get caught up in the drama and not take the step back and realize, oh, okay, there's puppet masters with these guys on their strings, actually pulling all these, all these buttons, pulling, uh, pulling all the strings and pushing all the buttons. So as Washington intensifies its push to drive Maduro from power, 
Putin has vowed to support his South American strategic partner and warned of catastrophic consequences if the United States was to send military assistance to opposition leader Juan Guaido. So, when the U.S. called a special United Nations Security Council session on Saturday focused on the crisis in Venezuela, Russia used the session to warn against foreign intervention in the Latin American nation and accuse the U.S. of attempting a coup. Russian private military contractors have flown into Venezuela in recent days to increase security for Maduro, according to Reuters news agency. And this is out of Al Jazeera. And I like to get info from every side possible so we have a clear picture. Obviously, if you're just listening to to MSNBC, CNN, and Fox News, you're only going to get one picture. Um, And so I like to look from as many different sources as possible. And, um, you know, including ones that I know are going to be very biased. But look at the bias on both sides and try to discern and discern what's going on. So Russia disavowed having any knowledge of those contractors. You know, they've disavowed that, as it says here. So Russia offered to mediate between Maduro's legitimate government and the opposition, if necessary, saying it was ready to cooperate with all political forces that acted responsibly. Moscow stands to lose a great deal if the Maduro government collapses, experts say. Pete Duncan, a Russian politics professor at University College London, said losing ties with Venezuela would be a huge blow to to Russia. Putin will do his utmost to to prevent regime change. And he did his utmost in Syria, and it worked. In the mid-1990s, Russia looked to Latin America for business opportunities. Under Hugo Chavez, Maduro's predecessor, Russia became one of Venezuela's strongest allies with economic ties ranging from oil and loans to arms sales. Duncan said that since Putin came to power in 2000, he has sought to cultivate partners in Latin America to counterbalance U.S. influence in the region and to enhance Russia's great uh, power status in the world. Anton Barbashin a political analyst at the Wilson Center said a major reason why Russia supports Maduro, the same principle why it supports uh, Bashar al-Assad, is the belief that no foreign power should meddle in the sovereign affairs of a particular state. And of course, people will point to the Ukraine on that one. And Vladimir Ruvinsky, a foreign policy expert at uh, IC University in Columbia, EAC, uh, told Al Jazeera the Kremlin views Russia, uh, Kremlin views Venezuela as the backyard of the U.S. in Washington's sphere of political influence, in the same way that Ukraine is in Russia's backyard, or what Kremlin calls the near abroad. So external observers typically view Cuba as Russia's key Latin American ally. But Ravinsky said Russia has never managed to restore the same level of confidence in Havana as in Soviet times. And the level of confidence between Moscow and Caracas is unrivaled. Venezuela is Russia's last asset in Latin America, said Ravinsky. Russia's political elites believe the political developments that have occurred since the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, such as Georgia and Ukraine's efforts to achieve independence from Russia, are the result of U.S. intervention. Russia wants to at least have a symbolic involvement in Latin America as payback for U.S. intervention in the near abroad. And Putin found an ally in Venezuela, the late Chavez, now Maduro, have shared Putin's worldview, opposed to U.S. hegemony. Ties between the U.S. and Venezuela began to sharply deteriorate when the socialist president Chavez was elected in 1999. And so it, it goes on. So Russia has a lot to lose there. And, and we keep learning more and more about that. So we have President Trump con- congratulating uh, that guy named Juan Guaido on becoming president of Venezuela. And uh, this is a tweet from Donald Trump. Maduro willing to negotiate with opposition in Venezuela following U.S. sanctions and cutting off of oil revenues. Guaido is being targeted by Venezuelan Supreme Court. Massive protests expected today. Americans should not travel to Venezuela until further notice. And in Maduro's Venezuela, even counting gold bars is a challenge. This is out of Bloomberg. Gold is the nation's largest export after crude refined oil. So Venezuela has exported gold to Turkey and the UAE. 
And Venezuela is the home to rich gold deposits and holds billions of dollars of foreign reserves in gold bars and the central bank's vaults. The question is, how much gold is there? And so the, the answer is taken on added significance as Maduro faces increasing pressure to resign. And, you know, this is, this is really what it's all about. And so we know the banking cabal who's behind all of this, you know, is, is the one that is basically interested in hoarding all the riches of the entire planet. And basically every single country uh, out there that won't go along with their system just kind of gets eliminated one after another one after another it's, it's just been what happens and so you know obviously they they do whatever they can through sanctions and other means as as well and you know this is out of radio for europe russia vows to do everything to support maduro everything criticizes u.s sanctions so what does that everything include well everything's a big word <laughs> everything and together with our other responsible members of the world community we will do everything to support the legal government of president maduro and standing up for the venezuelan constitution so that's a big statement and that was done by foreign minister sergey lavrov and uh, he didn't give any specifics but everything well that kind of lends you to think military is part of everything and over here out of sputnik Venezuela might mutate into yet another U.S.-China battlefield, so says this historian. And, you know, obviously China and Russia are tied at the hip, at least apparently. I have sources that are telling me that's not really the case, and it's temporary, and that that alliance will uh, fray and fall all apart as soon as um, certain things are achieved. And they're sources that are tied into uh, some of the biggest politicians here in the U.S., honestly. And uh, I don't know. I just don't see it. But perhaps that's part of the illusion. You know, perhaps that's part of the illusion. So, obviously, the U.S. and China have taken opposite sides with regard to ongoing Venezuelan crisis. Speaking to Sputnik, former U.N. independent expert Alfred de Zayas and Chinese academic Jiang Shui, shared their views on Beijing's relationship with Caracas, explaining why self-proclaimed interim president Juan Guaido has zero legitimacy. Venezuela might indeed mutate into yet another U.S.-China battlefield. Alfred de Zayas, an American lawyer, writer, historian, and, f and former U.N. independent expert on the promotion of democratic and equitable international order, told Sputnik, adding he does not believe that the U.S. will benefit within the framework of a trade war with China. So this this is definitely this could be something that you know starts the actual war and that's the big danger here. Refusal to hand over Venezuelan gold means the end of Britain as a financial center. And this is from Professor Wolf. The freezing of Venezuelan gold by the Bank of England is a signal to all countries out of step with U.S. interests to, re to withdraw their money, according to economist, economist and co-founder of Democracy at Work, Professor Richard Wolf. He told RT, that, RT America that Britain and its central bank have shown themselves to be under the thumbs of the U.S. Is that really the case? Perhaps it's actually reversed, as so many believe. Because, and really, as we said, it's really the banking cabal that controls all of this. That is a signal to every country that has or may have had difficulties with the U.S. They had better get their money out of England and out of London because it's not the safe place it once was. So this is very, very interesting. And again, um, thank you to everybody who watched that video I did on the, um, and I'm not going to go off into a huge tangent, but on uh, prophecy and Babylon the Great and what is Babylon the Great, you know, looking at things from a biblical standpoint. And it was so fascinating to see that London is a city on seven hills. And because one of the prophecies about who Babylon the Great is, is that it's a city founded on seven hills. Well, you know what? 
London is founded on seven hills. Washington is founded on seven hills. Rome is founded on seven hills. And so is Jerusalem. Interesting, is it not? Because these are the foundation centers of the banking cabal, of the cabal, you know, of the Illuminati, of, of all those words that we talk about. And uh, this Babylonian money magic system, it does go all the way back to Babylonian times. And isn't it just a fascinating little coincidence that these power centers, you know, Washington, the military power center, England, the financial power center, you know, Rome was, you know, their, their arm and, you know, that was their military power as well as their, their central power for a long, long time. And then it morphed into the Catholic Church as well as I've gotten into in many other videos. And we talk about the wealth of the Catholic Church. So, and then it all, all also ties into Jerusalem. I mean, all these power centers are built on seven hills. And this is all part of the same system that dominates the world today. It's really fascinating when you look at it, is it not? So when we look at this, there's a split going on here. There's a huge split. And even if at the very, very top, the ones pulling the strings, strings are controlling both sides, the BRICS nations and NATO and, uh, you know, the power centers that have been in power for a long time. You know, not everybody understands that they are nothing but a puppet. There are many, many puppets that don't realize that they are puppets. They, they think that they are themselves the puppet masters of their world. And so when we're talking about this, this, this is huge. And, you know, there's, there's gold that has gone missing as well. And so we have Maduro claiming that Trump ordered Colombian government and mafia to kill him. And we have Venezuela, we have military defectors asking the U.S. for weapons. Well, perhaps they're already en route. They've been en route for a while. And uh, as we said before, going back to the port of Beaumont, Texas, all that stuff being packed up and shipped out, I'm pretty sure now that the, my guess is that it was intended for this area. And that's what it was intended for. The timing is perfect. We see things developing. I think it's a logical conclusion now. And Maduro open to talks as 20 tons of gold mysteriously disappears from Venezuela's vaults. It disappeared, guys. Where did it go? Interesting, you know. So one of the things that I've shared with you guys before, um, from sources that are really deep in the know, they said you will never have a World War III develop as long as these countries are so intertwined financially. As long as you have Russia and China buying oil in petrodollar which has changed and you know you have this system where they're all so intertwined you're never going to get that world war three <clears throat> you know starting but when you see alternatives come up and when you see them pulling away from each other financially then you know there is truly a real risk for things to develop and now this is what we are seeing the financial systems are being pulled apart, and uh, they're <laughs> they're uh, hiding their gold. You know, it's it, there was a, a, an airplane, an empty airplane from Russia that went to Venezuela. Supposedly, that's something that the Russians and the Venezuelans are not confirming at all. But the sources on the other side are saying that's what happened. And twenty tons of gold mysteriously disappears. So this is something to be worried about because it's always all about power, resources, you know, and just, you know, maintaining and constantly growing power as these people at the top are just so greedy, it's disgusting. And their lack of caring about average human lives, which matter as much as their own pathetic lives, if not more in the bigger scheme of things, it's the little people that always the typical average person that always pays the biggest price in these wars and it, it always has killed me when you're watching a movie <clears throat> and all these atrocities are done and at the very end you know somehow they let the bad guy off the hook even though you know whether it's the bad guy or the bad king or what have you they always show mercy to to the <clears throat> reptilian leaders at the top and there's no other way 
the cold-blooded leaders at the top and uh, somehow all those other people that just simply went off to war and died and all the poor civilians you know it's as, as if as if they don't matter you know it's time for all this to stop and so people need to pay attention to this you know recognize and you know what we need is we need people in the militaries to basically throw away their weapons and say hey you know you're going to try to make me you're going to sell me on this war you're going to make me feel i'm doing a patriotic thing but in fact all i'm doing i'm not doing you know the will of the people I'm doing the will of the bankers at the top, the will of the rich, greedy people that want to be richer and greedier, that want to control every asset on the planet. I'm not doing God's will, certainly, sources will, will or however you view that as, and I'm not doing really the will of the people because how many people in these countries want war? And that's what they're always selling. Now, who, who profits in war? They do, because they also control the military-industrial complex, which is a huge money-making machine. These companies grow by leaps and bounds when we have these wars. These factories start producing things left and right. And who's financing it? Well, you and I and everybody that ever pays taxes is financing it, because they take our tax money and they basically use it for all these purposes and then they charge us interest on getting our own money back in loans and things like that it, it's a, it's such a system it's such a racket it's the biggest racket in the world and people are waking up to it and hence you know we have the yellow vest protests going on and you know we need to wake up more people all the time Russia warns that the low-yield U.S. nukes actually increased the, increased the risk of nuclear war, as we told you. Now they're building, President Trump is building low, lower-yield nuclear weapons. They're still nuclear weapons. They're lower-yield. Why would you want to do that? You know, because they intend on using them. Because they could use this weapon and say, well, you know, it's not a, it's not a full power thermonuclear device. It's 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 a uh, a precision low yield device, and and we just used it in a specific area and just wiped out maybe fifty thousand people that were innocent civilians and maybe you know two thousand soldiers. We can't accept this craziness. See, the, the result of this lowered yield is that the yield has been reduced by 95% from 100 kilotons of TNT to around 5 kilotons. Around one-third of the force of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Is even one-third of the effects of Hiroshima good? Acceptable? No, <laughs> not at all. You know, we this world is being led by insane madmen. And there's no other way you could basically put that out. These are insane madmen who don't care about you, I. They don't care about any animals. They don't care about the environment. They don't care about the planet itself. All they care about is their greed and their lust for power. These people are just about as disgusting as we could possibly think and uh, sorry to be so blunt but it's the truth and so this is Melissa Hannum and uh, so she says hey all you nuclear powers out there we're just going to trust that you recognize that this quote unquote just a little nuclear weapon and won't retaliate with all you've got remember the US only intends to nuke you a little bit Oh, we, we have to stop this madness now before the planet is completely destroyed. And so the only way to do that is to wake people up in droves while we're able to wake people up in droves. And, you know, the time may be very, very soon upon us when we can't do it anymore. So we need to. So my friends, as always, thumbs up to support the channel. Please do subscribe. Click the bell and click all the notifications as you'll have three options there. And share, share, share. Put this out everywhere you can. You know, stick it in your Facebook groups. Stick it on all the forums out there like Reddit and Godlike and so many of the other ones. And uh, try to wake people up as the clock is ticking on us. And it's getting closer and closer to midnight as we speak. So my friends, be safe, be prepared. God bless and namaste.